Thank you. Okay, uh, in, uh, in my uh, presentation, I will uh, uh, talk about a new scheme for uh, hybrid uh, distributed optical um, uh, fiber uh, sensors uh, based on uh, uh, Brillouin and the Rileb scattering. Uh, first of all, a few words about uh, distributed optical fiber sensors. Uh, these sensors uh, employ uh, uh, common uh, optical fiber for telecommunication as a sensors. So uh, we can uh, determine uh, the quantity of interest, for example, the temperature or the strain all along the fiber uh, with uh, um, a special resolution that depends on the interrogation unit that we employ for the measurements. Basically, all the uh, distributed optical fiber sensors are based on some form of a scattering of lights within the fiber. So when we uh, inject a pulse of light from a laser having a frequency F0 into the fiber, uh, we see that um, there is some uh, backscattered light that contains uh, different components. One of these components has the same frequency of the laser, and this is the so-called Rileb scattering. But there are also other components, F1, F2, etc., that are related to other kinds of scattering. In particular, we have the Brillouin scattering and the Rama scattering. Um, as we can see in this slide, uh, Rileb scattering can be used to perform <coughs> temperature, strain, and vibration measurements. Brillouin scattering can be used for temperature and strain measurements, while Rama scattering can be used for temperature measurements. And in this presentation, we will focus only on the first two mechanisms, Rileb scattering and Brillouin scattering, because <coughs> these uh, two forms of scattering can be uh, observed in uh, single mode optical fibers, while uh, Raman scattering uh, requires the use of multi mode uh, optical fibers. And uh, um, so, um, in, uh, <clears throat> uh, at first, uh, I will start with the Brillouin scattering. Um, the Brunus scattering can be uh, quite easily observed in single mode optical fibers. In particular, we may have uh, two uh, different configurations. We have uh, a configuration where the fiber is uh, <clears throat> illuminated only from one side, and these are the uh, sensor based on spontaneous Brunus scattering. And then we have the sensor based on stimulated brilliant scattering where the light is launched from both sides of the fiber. <clears throat> now, uh, actually, the, the spontaneous brilliant scattering based sensors are advantages because they can be uh, used by launching the light only from one end of the fiber, which is uh, uh, advantageous in uh, some applications. But uh, stimulated Brillouin scattering is a much stronger uh, phenomenon. So it, uh, it, the performance is much better. And um, so uh, you know, we will focus on stimulated Brillouin scattering. Uh, as I told before, the phenomenon can be observed by launching two optical waves from the two sides of an optical fiber. Uh, these two waves, uh, should uh, uh, be uh, shifted uh, in frequency by some quantity. Uh, when the uh, frequency shift between the so-called pump beam and the probe beam uh, is within a well-defined spectrum, then we observe an amplification of the probe beam. And this amplification uh, is uh, governed by the so-called Brillouin gain, which is a function of the Brillouin frequency shift, as we can see in the lower right corner in this slide. 
and uh, the quantity of interest is the so-called Brüller frequency shift, that is the frequency at which we have the maximum amplification. Now, the Brüller scattering can be used as a sensing mechanism because this Brüller frequency shift is a linear function of temperature and strain. So, by <coughs> detecting the changes of the Brüller frequency along the fiber, we can determine the temperature or the strain profile along the fiber. Uh, usually, <coughs> this kind of um, measurement is done by uh, injecting one pulse of a pump light from one side of the fiber and a, a continuous wave probe light from the other side of the fiber. Uh, the measurement is done by detecting the power of the probe power at the receiver, uh, but this measurement must be, uh, should be repeated several times because we need to scan the pump probe frequency shift in order to determine the brilliant frequency shift on each section of the fiber. Now, um, it should be clear that uh, the brilliant measurements uh, are not so fast. Uh, because we need to scan the pump probe frequency shift over a proper range in order to extract the brilliant frequency shift along the fiber. This implies that the acquisition time is usually in the order of a few minutes. That implies so that brilliant based sensors are typically confined to the realm of static measurements. Um, in case we want to do, we, we want to perform a dynamic measurements, we can use a, a different configuration that is called the slope assisted brilliant configuration. In this case, we avoid the scan of the pump probe frequency shift by fixing the frequency shift between the pump and the probe on the slope of the brilliant key spectrum. In this way, any local change of the strain will produce a change in the brilliant gain. So by detecting the change in the brilliant gain, we can uh, um, uh, determine the, uh, uh, the, the variation, the dynamic variation of the strain of the fiber. And uh, <clears throat> In the, in, the few, in the last years, we have applied this uh, technique, for example, in order to uh, perform a model analysis of mechanical structure or even in the uh, railway traffic uh, monitoring field uh, by attaching an optical fiber along the rail and uh, uh, monitoring the time-dependent strain of the rail induced by uh, the train passage. So in this way, we have demonstrated we can do axle counting, speed detection, we can estimate the wave of the train and so on. Uh, still, uh, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, um, underline that brilliant scattering is not um, uh, suitable for vibration measurement. Uh, it, uh, for vibration, we mean uh, uh, dynamic strain measurement with very low level of strain in the order of a nano strain. In case of a brilliant measurement, we are still limited to the um, strain in the order of a micro strain. Uh, as an alternative, we can employ Rayleigh scattering. Rayleigh scattering is caused by fluctuation of the refractive index of the silica fiber, which act as a scatterers for the incident light. So when we launch a pulse of light into the fiber and we observe the intensity of the backscattered light, we can see some uh, uh, speckle like signal where we have this uh, uh, fast variation of the uh, intensity of the backscattered light. These variations are due to the interference between the scatterer within the pulse. So it's clear that every perturbation, any vibration, we change the relative distance between the scatterer within the fiber can be uh, visualized and it can be located by looking at the variation 
of the backscattered signal uh, when we launch consecutive courses. So um, these kind of sensors that are commercially known as distributed acoustic sensors can be used, for example, in the, in the seismic field for monitoring the seismic wave propagating into the ground, or can apply, for example, for the monitoring of the seismic wave producing to the ground by traffic, by vehicle uh, passing through the road. So, um, in, uh, in this case, in this presentation, uh, now I want to focus on hybrid sensor. Hybrid sensor are uh, systems that can detect two scattering lights simultaneously, and this can be usable for, for uh, many applications. For example, um, if we focus on uh, uh, pipeline uh, monitoring, we can use a single uh, interrogation unit in a single optical fiber in order to determine, for example, the vibration and the temperature changes induced by leakage on the pipeline, or we can use the, uh, the strain in order to determine the deformation of the pipeline. So it's uh, of interest to uh, develop an instrument can, that can detect uh, brilliant scattering, relative scattering simultaneously. So we have um, uh, we have developed this, uh, uh, an optical scheme where uh, we use a single laser in order to uh, excite both Rilev scattering and Brillouin scattering along the same fiber. Um, in few words, we see that the laser light is uh, split into branches and we can see that in the lower branch, the light is pulsed and is amplified and this is the pump light that is used to generate backscattered light. In the upper branch we have uh, another electrode modulator that is used to shift the frequency of the light. So we have here the Stokes light and the anti-Stokes light. In the receiver path we have uh, a couple of fiber break readings these are used as narrow optical filter in order to separate the Rayleigh backscattering from the Bullion backscattering. So these two lights are then converted in uh, electrical signal by use of photodetectors and the, and the signal are then sent to a data acquisition unit for uh, signal process. <clears throat> Okay, I would just want to briefly show you a couple of experiments where we have used this setup. In the first experiment, the fiber was wound around a pipe. The pipe was put in vibration by using a, a piezoelectric transducer and simultaneously we have applied some heat to the fiber. So in the graph here in the upper corner on the left, we see the brilliant frequency shift profile along the fiber. In particular, we can focus on this part of the graph where we see the change of the brilliant frequency due to temperature change. So if we translate the brilliant frequency shift in temperature, because the relation is linear, so it's, it's very easy translate the brilliant frequency shift in temperature, we can see that the fiber, the sensor follows the heating and cooling of the fiber quite uh, accurately. And uh, we should underline that brilliant measurements are done with the frequency rates of one hertz. So we have one measurement per second that is enough follow the heating and cooling cycle of the fiber. Simultaneously, <clears throat> we use the same setup in order to determine the vibration along the fiber uh, with the maximum uh, frequency um, of 200 Hertz. So in the lower graph, we can see that from the Rayleigh traces, 
we can easily um, locate the vibration along the fiber and uh, uh, the frequency of this vibration that is 150 hertz. In another experiment, we have used the brilliant uh, measurements uh, using the slope assisted um, uh, scheme that I discussed it before. So in this case, we can actually perform uh, the measurement of a dynamic strain with high frequency. And we compare the results of brilliant measurements on the left with the results of relief measurement on the right. We can see the main difference. On the left, we can see that actually the strain amplitude increases with the excitation voltage of the piezoelectric transducer. And this is what really we, what we expect. In fact, brilliant measurements are quantitative, so we can determine the micro strain actually applied on the fiber. On the other hand, we can see that signal to noise ratio, that is the blue, it is the red line, is quite low when the strain amplitude falls in the range of one to micro strain. This should be compared to the results on the right, where we can see first that relief measurements are not quantitative, so they can just provide the they can just provide the frequency of the vibration but not the amplitude of the vibration itself but the signal to noise ratio is much better especially if, if we move to the low excitation voltage range and this is confirmed by uh, comparing the 3d uh, uh, distribution of the strain along the fiber and uh, we can see on the left the results of the brilliant measurements and on the right the results of relief measurement. We can see that the relief measurement is much more accurate uh, in the sense that the vibration is only visible in the position where vibration is really applied. On the other hand, the brilliant measurement can provide an estimate of the amplitude of the strain applied on the fiber. So the idea is to combine the information provided by brilliant measurement that are quantitative information with those provided by relief measurement that is more accurate in locating the vibration along the fiber. So we can combine the two scattering mechanisms in order to gain a better insight into what happens in the fiber. So in conclusion, I presented a multi-parameter scheme for simultaneous brilliant ref measurements in optical fiber. Uh, we have shown that uh, the combined use of a brilliant relative scattering permits to determine the temperature and vibration simultaneously along the same fiber. And we have also shown that uh, slope-assisted brilliant measurements and relative measurement can be combined in order to get a more valuable information than that provided by single measurements. Thank you very much for your attention.